The Halo franchise is a very passionate, very outspoken community, and for good reason. There is a legacy behind these games, built off of core-defining features that other games just don't have, that creates a unique and exciting gameplay experience you won't find anywhere else. For example, Halo's shield system. It's simple, yet effective. Get shot, your shields deplete. Take cover, and they recharge again. Each weapon does a specific amount of damage on your shields, regardless of where the shot hits you. And because of that, an experienced player can, in an instant, easily calculate how many shots it will take for them to die or for their opponents to die, and all movement and combat decisions are based around this knowledge. Apply enough damage and the shields break, and this is where precision comes into play. The first one to land the headshot comes out of the gunfight on top. It's that blend of patient tracking followed by precise execution that is unique to Halo. You don't quite find that experience anywhere else. Here comes Flamesword around the corner. Flamesword with some good shots. And now oh, Vader gets taken down. Flamesword still got it on the sticks, baby. There's a bit of a bang. Or what about Halo's jump? A moon jump, so to speak. Very high arcing and can allow your Spartan to quickly scale a map. Combine that with crouch to lift up your legs and jump even higher. But as powerful as Halo's jump can be in map movement, it's also one of the riskiest, most punishable options you could go for. And every experienced Halo player knows that a poorly timed jump is a death sentence. He wanted him to strike oh, that there. blue window. Looking towards a jump up now. Very confident. Across oh, oh my word! Ready for the jump! Gun, Gun type. type knows what he's doing you here! Animal. The combination of all these little aspects creates a gameplay experience that only Halo can offer, and it's all part of the reason why this franchise has such a passionate, outspoken community. And this extends to so many other areas, even something as simple as the ability to aim down sight. In today's video, we're going to discuss ADS in Halo, how it began, what it became, and where it might go in the future based off my analysis of the little bit of footage that we've seen so far. Whether you're brand new to Halo or been here since 2001, there is info in this video I think any type of Halo fan can enjoy. And if you do enjoy it, let me know, like the video, hit sub, and join me on the way. We are almost at 20k subs and only 30% of you currently sub. I can't keep doing this without you guys so if you love this stuff like i do hit that button let's punch through Assuming you're up to date with Halo Infinite's E3 footage, you might have noticed that the ability to aim down sight, or ADS, or in Halo terms, Smart Link, has returned once again. Now, for your everyday gamer outside of Halo, this probably doesn't seem like a big deal. The ability to ADS is pretty standard across just about every FPS game today, but... For a veteran Halo player, this simple feature is actually very controversial. Now, why would that be? The shortest answer is because of how this affects Halo's weapon balance, core aspects of its gameplay, and crazy enough, even its identity too. To fully understand the reasoning behind all of this, there's some history we gotta unpack here. So I'm gonna start from the beginning and start with the statement that Halo games, unlike many other FPS games, are designed around the player's ability to move while shooting accurately from the hip. Now, most popular FPS games, by contrast, operate under the more realistic idea that moving while shooting from the hip is very inaccurate. A perfect example of this is a game like Counter-Strike. In Counter-Strike, every step that you take has an adverse effect on the position of your weapon. If you try to move and shoot at the same time, good luck hitting your target. Your shots just spray around wildly like a garden hose on the lawn. So if you want to be effective in CS, you need to very carefully pace out the timing that you stop your movement to shoot accurately and then move again to stray for reposition. Make it. Nice. Uh, oh. Oh. On the other hand, in a game like Call of Duty, where running and gunning is encouraged, shooting from the hip is still very inaccurate, especially if you're moving. It widens the bullet spread, and it makes it very difficult to shoot targets at a mid to a long range. But in Call of Duty, you can pull the left trigger, aim down sight, and that stabilizes your aim, tightens the bullet spread, and lets you hit far off targets. And it does so at the sacrifice of mobility. Your movement slows down when ADSing. So once again, to be effective, COD players need to choose when to sacrifice sacrifice mobility for a more accurate shot or come up with a trick or two like jump shotting to work around this. Oh, I'm looking low, I'm looking low. Definitely great 
I have to go. I have to go. Now back to Halo. Halo works a little differently. Similar to other arena FPSs like Doom and Quake before it, in Halo you're a super soldier. You're capable of shooting weapons from the hip at maximum precision, all while moving and jumping around the map at top speed. No need to slow down, no need to pull a trigger and focus up your aim. In Halo there's this freedom in the simplicity of moving and shooting from the hip that's kind of a rarity in popular FPS games today. I got holy sh**! Oh my god. Uh, it was awesome, it was awesome. All of Halo's gameplay was built around this capability. At least 80% of combat in Halo took place outside of scope. Whether or not your weapon could scope was an important part of the balance and the role of that weapon in the sandbox. If your weapon wasn't meant to be used at a long range, it simply didn't have a scope. If you press the scope button, instead you'd get like a binocular view that did little other than allow you to see enemies from a long range. If you wanted to fight those enemies, you'd have to either move closer or find a different weapon, like for example, the BR. Design to be used at mid to long ranges, the BR will let you scope. But unlike Call of Duty, this scope did not tighten the spread of your bullets. It didn't slow down the speed of your movement. Your movement, your precision was completely unaffected. You just got to zoom in to the target for a closer view so you can more accurately place your shots. The role of the scope in Halo was so secondary in importance to the core mechanics of shooting grenades in melee that it wasn't even mapped to the left trigger on your controller like most FPS games. Instead, you toggle in and out of scope by clicking in the right stick. And because some weapons could scope and some couldn't, Halo also had an important balancing mechanic in its gunplay, the D-scope. If your scope is up and you take damage, you're knocked out of it, you're set back to hip fire. If, say, you're lining up your scope on an opponent and he shoots you mid-flick, that setback to hip fire could cause you to overcorrect your shot and your shot would completely miss the target. D-scoping adds this unique layer of depth to long-range gunfights in Halo. Shooting at a player in a powerful position is about more than just doing damage and getting the kill, it's also to to strategically knock away their scope and make it more difficult for them to aim at you as you carefully reposition around the map. To win in a long range gunfight, you have to have this discipline to keep your right stick as steady as possible while making small adjustments in your strafe to both evade and correct your shot. And experienced players, they take this a step farther. They can both predict and prepare themselves for the moments that they will take damage in scope, knowing that they'll be de-scoped while already thinking about the precise timing and placement of their rescope so they nail their opponent and set them back on the next shot. And this creates a unique kind of push and pull in Halo's combat that to this day you don't quite see in any other video game. Boy misses the headshot there, top middle, Flamesword's trying to push in and finish it off. Tusk is in a hard place and again Roy, what a finish coming in from him! 17 to 9 now, in field. Oh, oh my! my. Oh! Oh! He's off the map! He doesn't, he care. doesn't care! Okay, now if you grew up playing Halo, you know this stuff. There's nothing new here. But I do think that laying it out like this is useful in showcasing what's so unique and so important about these mechanics in Halo Infinite. And we can use this info to better understand the controversy behind the eventual change to this system in Halo 5. This is Halo 5 Guardians. We jump to 2015, Halo 5 comes out, and in an attempt to modernize Halo's gameplay, 343 introduced a whole new overhaul to the scope system. Called Smart Link, this feature allows every single weapon in the sandbox the ability to scope in. So no longer is this limited to long-range weapons. Now everything, the SMGs, assault rifles, shotguns, even the sword, had a zoom-in capability, and this caused a stir in the community. Now, first of all, not everything changed with this new scope system. Many core aspects of scoping were still the same. So movement speed in scope, that wasn't changed. The D-scope, something that was actually taken out in Halo 4, was brought back in Halo 5 due to popular demand. The issue with this new system starts with how it changed the effectiveness and the capability of each weapon in the sandbox. For the first time in Halo, scoping in with an automatic weapon would tighten bullet spread and boost accuracy. Now, this wasn't huge. Shooting from the hip 
tip was still effective, but this was significant. And because of this, weapons that were meant to be used in close ranges, like, say, the assault rifle, could suddenly damage and kill players from way farther off. Even a precision weapon like the BR was more accurate in scope. The BR on launch was easily one of the most powerful weapons in the game, in part due to this feature, and you could laser down anyone from virtually any range with this thing. Double kill. The biggest defenders, though, in my opinion, were the shotgun and sword. Scoping in shoddy tightened the spread, making it lethal from farther away. With the scatter shot in scope, you could one-shot kill from over 10 meters away. Combine that with the fact that the shots could bounce and home off the floor, this thing was ridiculously strong and competitive. And then there's the sword, which on top of giving you a speed boost while holding it, zooming in with this thing nearly doubles its lunge range from about 7 to almost 12 meters, which is just nuts to me. Uh, shout out to Izolai, by the way. This is his footage. He collects data like this for all Halo weapons across all Halo titles. A great resource. I recommend you check out his channel after this. I linked it below. Overall, you can probably guess that these adjustments kind of muddied up weapon balance. All weapons were more versatile, but but as a result, their unique role in the sandbox was kind of lost in this process. Although many of these weapons did receive balancing patches over the game's lifetime and automatics were removed from competitive play and they never should have been there in the first place. But to the point where now I'd say Halo 5's weapon balance, especially in competitive, is solid. Except the BR. That, that thing just blows. Oh, right there. Oh, it's before I was sliding. But right there is why the BR sucks. It ages the pool out, shoots slow, gives you more heavy aim. But one change that persisted, and one that I think might have hurt Halo 5 the most, was that this adjustment to the scope system encouraged the use of scope in Halo more than ever before, meaning you saw it more, especially in the promotional material for this game. And that changed the look and the perceived identity of this game in the Halo franchise. Smart Link in Halo 5 isn't just a simple scope. It's accompanied by the animation of pulling a weapon into your face and aiming down sight. And that animation actually changes gameplay but I'm gonna save that discussion for later in the video. But just visually speaking, seeing the BR scope go from this to this, or seeing the carbine, let's say, go from this to this, what does this look like to you? Because to me, this looks like literally every other FPS game on the market. This looks like COD, Destiny, and Apex all had a baby, right? It just takes away the uniqueness, the identity of Halo, and this was actually exacerbated by the control scheme in Halo 5 as well. Halo 5 was the first Halo game to include the aim down sight on the left trigger this time as the default scheme. Here is Halo 5's default control scheme. So if Halo 5 is your first Halo game, this is what you're playing on. You've got your ADS left trigger, you've got sprint on the left stick, the right stick is crouch, right? What does this scheme remind you of? Other than like every other FPS game, but more specifically, this looks like Call of Duty Tactical controls, right? This is almost identical to tactical with a couple differences. It's as if on paper, as far as just the way you would interact with the game, Halo 5 is basically just Call of Duty at first glance, just off of this info, right? And I'm sure this decision was intentional from 343 because they want to make Halo approachable. They want to make it so that anybody from any FPS can easily jump on and get into the game. So even though I, I hate this idea, I understand the reasoning behind it. But the thing is, I said on paper and I said perceived identity because despite the changes and despite what the haters might tell you online, Halo 5 is still very much a Halo game and the general rules and risk reward system in combat operate exactly like they do in any other Halo. It just doesn't seem like it at first glance. So not only did Smart Link make Halo look less like Halo, but the resulting change to the default scheme didn't do it any favors and all of this fed into what I believe was basically a community-wide misconception that Halo wasn't even Halo anymore. Just some trend chasing bullshit. <laughs> uh.
By the way, just a little sidebar, in my opinion, the default control scheme in Halo 5 is the worst control scheme in the game. Literally anything else is better. It's just the more you play, the more you'll realize that that control scheme is actively fighting against the way you should be playing the game. It, it's, it's hard to really get into it without getting into a whole separate video. I do have an old, old YouTube video that talks about this briefly that I'll link, but this is a topic I need to update in a separate video. So nice uh, second idea to look into. Whew, damn. Okay, not gonna lie. That was a little bit more exposition than I had anticipated, and that got a little sweaty. So I took a break, came back, changed my clothes, kept it simple, and let's finally get into this. Let's finally talk about how ADS has changed in Infinite and why ultimately I think it's changed for the better. Okay, now we didn't get to see too much footage of ADS in these infinite trailers, just very brief moments of the AR, Needler, BR, Commando, Skewer, and Snipe. We'll start with the AR and Needler because these are the biggest points of concern, and similar to Halo 5, both these weapons do have zoom functionality. Though it doesn't look quite as drastic, the weapon remains on the right side of the screen, whereas in Halo 5 it pulls into the center. Now anyone watching this thinking this is going to be Halo 5 all over again, hold on, Let's address a couple things. First off, I think it's about time that we see some form of evolution from the binoculars in Classic Halo. Like, what actual gameplay value do binoculars provide in Classic Halo? They're useless. They don't do anything. So I think it's about time that we see some form of evolution here, and I think zooming is a natural evolution for these weapons. That doesn't mean that I think zooming is the only way to evolve these weapons in the sandbox, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. Also, I think that features like this help ensure that each weapon is useful enough to stand on its own and feels powerful within its role. Because while well, in Halo 5, there might have been the issue with automatics being too strong, classic Halo games sort of had the opposite issue, and some weapons were not very useful at all. A perfect example of this is Halo 3's assault rifle. You're kidding yourself if you think that was a good weapon. It's weak, it's inaccurate, and for some reason it has a slower time to kill than a single SMG. And what about those goofy brute spikers, man? Anyone unironically dual wielding brute spikers is just asking to be in the next mid blitz video. Joy. Kill Tacular. Kill Atrocity. Kill Joy. Now, of course, Halo has always been, and always should be, a precision weapon game first. That's the core of its identity in gunplay. But I still think it's important that every weapon feels useful and effective in its own right, and you don't regret picking it up. And some form of scope functionality could help ensure that happens. They just need to find a sweet spot with the balance here, and I think they already are. Back in Halo 5's launch with the AR, when you scoped in, your reticle bloom would actually decrease. In Halo Infinite, though, this doesn't appear to be the case. The reticle bloom looks the same regardless of whether you're in scope or in hipfire, which is already a step in the right direction. Now, we don't know for sure if this means that there won't be a difference in bullet spread between hipfire and scope, but it's a good first step. Just the process of zooming in in general is going to boost the effectiveness of your weapon at a longer range. So to also have your bullet spread tighten, to me, just seems like overkill. So hopefully if there is a difference in spread, it's negligible at the most, but this will be a good thing to think about during flighting when we test the game. And then we'd also need to look at things like aim assist and red reticle range. And for those who are not aware, red reticle range is the optimal kill range for your weapon and where I believe you receive the most aim assist. If your target is outside of this range, there is a drop-off in aim assist, and thus accuracy is more difficult. In Halo 5, scoping in increased your red reticle range, but in Infinite, this might be different. We don't know. So these are all variables to think about to ensure that weapons are good, but not too good. Regardless, at least visually, this new scope design looks like a step away from Halo 5 and a return to form. Across all this footage, we saw barely any ADS use, and you can tell that 343 are really trying to emphasize the effectiveness of hip fire in this game, which, as we know, makes this gameplay look and feel more like Halo, which is a very exciting thing. Speaking of exciting, I love what they've done with the long-range weapons. Just look at the BR and Commando. No more of that ADS design from Halo 5. We are back 
back to simple scopes. Crazy as it seems, little changes like this, they go a long way in preserving Halo's unique identity across all the other shooters out there today. Also, seeing an instant scope like this and no animation gives me just a little bit of hope that scope mechanics will revert back to what they were in classic Halo. And I mentioned this earlier in the video that the ADS animation does actually change gameplay. Because every weapon needs to go through this process of zooming into the player's face, in Halo 5, if you swap to a weapon, you can't actually scope in until that weapon has set in your hands, as opposed to every other Halo before it, where you could actually scope in slightly before the weapon switch was complete. Now, that doesn't mean that you could shoot faster. Time to shoot out of a weapon switch was the same, but just being able to scope in slightly earlier is a big deal, especially with the snipe. Because of Halo's descope mechanic, being able to switch to snipe and scope in right away or why why the snipe and scope in immediately that little bit of convenience goes a long way in the entire feel of sniping and weapon responsiveness overall However, because we can see in this infinite footage that during the descope there is still some form of animation taking place, I'm keeping my expectations very low that this is a returning feature, but hopefully 343 have this on their radar, because personally I'd put this at the top of my infinite wish list. There's one more thing I want to touch on in today's video, I brought it up earlier, it's this idea that adding a scope isn't the only way to evolve a weapon. Something interesting about the infinite multiplayer trailer was this weapon, I'm not sure what it's called, but what What's cool about it is it seems to have an alternate fire. You'll notice this player has a horizontal reticle and he shoots a horizontal beam, but then shortly after the gun and the reticle switches to vertical and then he shoots a vertical beam. This actually reminds me of the light rifle in Halo 5. It had that unique feature where in hip fire it was a four shot kill, but if you scoped it in, the weapon changed, it shot a wider beam with a slower rate of fire that could kill in three shots. Halo 4's LR did something similar. Now, of course, we don't know how this player is making this switch. He could just be pressing a button on the D-pad like most other FPS games, but I think the idea of this switch being tied to the scope, like it is on the light rifle, is a pretty cool concept. What's interesting also is no scope is used in this clip. As far as we can tell, the reticle is horizontal and vertical, and it's in hip fire both times. So what about alternate fire instead of a scope? Or, you know, or is it tied to the D-pad? I don't know, but I think this is a pretty cool concept. Let me know what you think in the comments, and let me know if you have cool ideas for alternate fire for some of these weapons that we haven't seen scopes for yet. And that is all I've got for today's very comprehensive video on ADS in Halo. Now here I thought this would be a quick and easy video. This is supposed to be like five to eight minutes, but of course, in typical shy way fashion, I had to overthink and overdo it, and here we are, 20 minutes later. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I know many of you guys who watch my content, you know this stuff. I brought up a lot of info in this video that's very well known, but I felt that, you know, while we're waiting for Halo Infinite, waiting to finally play the game, I'd try something different, try a, a more comprehensive video that takes a, you know, a past, present, and future look at the ADS mechanic, especially because it's controversial, and there's a lot of, uh, you know, deep history, controversial topics in Halo that not many people are, are really diving into. Anyway, I know that in my last video I did a poll. Thank you for voting, by the way, if you guys voted. Uh, we had like 5,000 votes, which is... I, I don't really do polls normally on YouTube, but I've never had that many votes on anything, so cool. Thank you for voting. I will be doing the weapon analysis. I've been taking a, a bit of a, a break, a little time off, but the weapon analysis will be coming up, so stay tuned for that. All right, that's it for me. What do you think of ADS in Halo Infinite? Is it a step in the right direction, and what aspect of this game are you most looking forward to? Let me know in the comments below. As always, if you haven't hit sub, check out related videos. I'll see you in the next one.